How to Create Work-Life Balance Through Time Management and Delegation with Joe Bravo, Episode 317. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit With Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel. And if it sounds like I have a cold, I do not. It's allergies, but uh, it is messing with my voice. So um, we're just going to have to deal with it. A little different version of myself for, for the next uh, uh, next few episodes, probably, if not more than that. Uh, we're in a, a big batching season right now, so I may have a lot of recording uh, recorded episodes that sound like this. Um, but... Uh, interviews are my most exciting episodes. Uh, we really get to dig into somebody else's life experience, somebody else's talent, somebody else's expertise, and ask them all kinds of questions, uh, bring it to you, and you can choose to incorporate all or some of that into your own life, your own practice, your own uh, business as you uh, as you are on your growth journey. So I'm super excited today because you know some usually we have the face of an organization. Usually we have the person who, the founder, the CEO, the owner. Um, and it's no secret that we do a lot of collaboration with a company called Get Staffed Up. Get Staffed Up does uh, virtual uh, uh, assistant services, uh, offshore talent. Uh, they help you with sourcing uh, amazing talent. As a matter of fact, I have uh, my own staffers from Get Staffed Up and they come, they're fully educated. Like I, both of, of the staffers that I got from Get Staffed Up um, have um, college degrees, master's degrees, uh, but they, they happen to live in a place where uh, perhaps compensation uh, or the value of the dollar carries you more. Uh, so uh, working for somebody here, uh, even at a lower compensation than what you normally would get, uh, gives them a nice salary and they love working for uh, good American companies. Um, specifically, we you know we focus obviously on on the legal niche, which is where Get Staffed Up focuses on. Um, so it's it's exciting to be able to have somebody else in the organization come here, and that's what we have today. So. So today we have Joe Bravo. Uh, he's a senior brand ambassador for Get Staffed Up, and he's been out there doing um, video interviews of uh, partners and, and clients. Uh, recently, uh, one of our clients was highlighted uh, in one of his client spotlights of Get Staffed Up, and it was a great interview. And um, uh, he's putting together some really cool stuff for them. And uh, we we have the opportunity to pick his brain and learn a little bit about him, uh, understanding he's not he's not the founder. And, you know, ha- but what uh, what makes him tick and what makes him, you know, uh, one of the things we had uh, Molly McGrath on our podcast um, or Molly Hall. I'm not sure which is the right last name. We'll link her uh, interview up in the show notes. It's been a while since we had her on the podcast, uh, but it was it was a great episode. And um, she has a company called Hiring and Empowering Solutions. And what she talks about is having an intrapreneur uh, in your business. Basically, that's an employee who acts like an entrepreneur. You want employees who are able to not only follow direction, but who are able to make decisions for themselves. They're able to solve problems. They're able to elevate things to your level um, that need to be elevated. And they're part of the solution uh, to the overall growth of your business. And um, Joe has obviously stepped into that role and get staffed up. And um, I'm excited to be able to pick his brain about that and what that might look like for you who might be bringing on your own staffers for your organization. Um, now, before I bring Joe on, I just want to let you know of an opportunity that you have. Um, we at various times offer our listeners a free coaching call. Now, um, it is an, an entryway to our elite uh, law, lawyer um uh, coaching program where uh, we have uh, law firms that are having a m- massive, amazing results um, 
Uh, we recently had one of our clients share with us how they went from losing money when they joined us to uh, to making a 40% profit margin without any change in their expenses, uh, which is absolutely incredible um, that they were able to do that. And I'm excited to hopefully have that client on as a podcast guest in a future episode. Um, but one of the things that can happen for you is we can help you completely change the trajectory of your law firm. Um, so it all starts with a free coaching call, which has absolutely no strings attached, um, but you will be potentially, if you're a good fit, you will be offered um, an entry into our elite program at the end of it. Um, but on that coaching session, we dive into what might be holding you back, what might be getting in your way of you achieving not, not financial results. We can talk about financial results, but achieving the lifestyle that you want. Um, a lot of attorneys might be successful financially, but they're working on the weekends. They're working at nights. They're barely spending time with their family. They don't have time to spend on hobbies and, and fun activities or quality time with their children or quality time with their spouse or significant other. And we want to change that. We want to change your business to become the fuel for the life that you want. So if you want to do that, if you want to uncover what might be preventing you from getting there and how we can help you get there very quickly, literally in 12 to 18 months, we can completely change the trajectory of your firm, then you want to book a free coaching session with us. And you can do that at profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. I believe that's the link profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. If it's not, my team will go and make it the right link. So um I didn't have that in front of me, uh, so I might have botched it. But hey, uh, if you don't find it, uh, just ping us anywhere. Ping us on social, send us an email. All those links are in the show notes to this episode. Without further ado, I'm going to bring Joe Bravo on. Joe, how are you? Hi, Moshe. Thank you for having me. I'm pretty good. Thank you. And also, thank you for having me as a guest, even while you have like a little bit of a congestion, because I, I, I think it's not going to slow you down, not one bit. No, nope, not at all. It's you know what's funny is some people like if they get the slightest bit ill, you know, a little sniffle, a little, you know, they're like out of commission. They need somebody to wait on them hand and foot because they're, you know, they're uh, it, the world's coming to an end. Um, yeah. I mean, you'd you'd have to like literally tie me down uh, to keep to put me out of commission. So um, yeah, we're just gonna keep rolling with it and we'll make it work and um, it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, so, Joe, what I like to do with guests when they come on is our listeners never heard of you. They don't know who you are. Maybe some of them did. Maybe some of them are watching your stuff. At, you know, the Get Staffed Up is putting out. Um, but we'd like to know more about you. So t just talk to us briefly about your story. Like, you know, how did you get to where you are now? Uh, how did you end up in, you know, getting involved with Get Staffed Up? And, and what has that uh, journey been like um, for you? Well, first off, thank you for the question. And again, thank you for having me. Uh, I really like that question. I'll try to be, uh, I'll try to sum it up. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> so uh, I was a public speaker and in some sorts, I'm still am uh, some kind of a public speaker. I used to run a lot of different workshops in my country. Uh, we also went international for a couple of minutes there. But when the pandemic hit, all of that changed. And not even with the virtual setup, uh, we were ready to move on because we had everything we needed to get to, the, not to that next stage of doing everything virtually and have everything automated. But my country wasn't ready for that. Uh, and many of us who were in that type of business, it, it suddenly disappeared from one day to the next one. It just like poof. Uh, and it was very frustrating for me because uh, the way that I put myself out there, I was the healthiest unemployed person you'll ever meet. And mm -hmm. that was a pretty harsh reality for me because I graduated law school in my country with honors. I was with uh, this, the, the equivalent to magna cum laude over here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, I, what country uh, is that? Oh, I'm located in Mexico. Uh, okay. So for anybody that wants to ever visit, you have a friend over here. Um, and then I started running my business. Everything was going great. And then the pandemic hit and everything changed. But for some strange reason, I don't know what if it was like divine providence, whatever you call it, uh, I decided to invest in my equipment right before that happened. We were already transitioning to things doing everything virtual. Mm -hmm. And then when it hit, 
turns out I have everything I need in order to move forward. I just didn't know it. And when I started sending out job applications and started looking up for places that I knew I wasn't gonna like, I know how the how, how working here, becoming an employee here feels like. Um, I was already a little bit depressed on how things are gonna pan out before they even started. Mm -hmm. And it was months sending out applications. And then I saw this place with Get Staffed Up and then I, 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 at first I didn't think it was real. Like, can you honestly work through your computer, get paid and then open up your world to a whole new set of possibilities? And it turns out you can. Uh, I had no idea that this whole, whole thing gone virtual was real and was profitable. I even had my doubts when I started working at the company. Like, are, is this is this actually gonna like like real? Are they not like pulling a very elaborate prank on us? And turns not it turns out they're not. Uh, this opened up a whole new possibility uh, world of possibilities for me because one thing that I am uh, I believe something that that makes me different out there is that I'm a lawyer. Uh, and many virtual assistants out there might be lawyers, not all of them, but it's not the same as being a lawyer in this country as being a lawyer in, in, in the US. And the lawyer profession itself, everything that it profit, everything that, 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 that's out there about the lawyer profession, it's something that I very much admire. And when I was suddenly facing the fact that that's not how it runs in my country, I was again a little bit disappointed. And then just like these two things formed the perfect storm for me. And then a whole, again, a whole new world and the possibility opened up with working virtually that now I get the chance to meet the people that I admire. Now I get the chance to work with people that I admire. And then I can also do the same thing that was done for me, that was get out of a tight spot and then find something that's worthy and that's completely I had no idea I could be this comfortable working fully productive while being at my own home, which is something that I never used to do. I used to travel a lot. Now I'm able to live my life the way that I want to do it while remaining productive with people that I admire. So I am very thankful for the opportunity. I am amazed at all of the things that you guys do. And when I say you guys, I mean lawyers. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I believe that it sums up who I am and how I came to be. Yeah, that, very interesting. This journey from from lawyer to senior brand ambassador. What about the 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 job at Get Staffed Up got you excited? Like like how, I mean, it's it's a big jump, right? From from one to the other. So there has to be like certain aspects of it that just excited you enough to say hey this is i want to i want to take a jump into this and see if if this is going to be uh the right place for me to land so what were what were those things that really got you excited the fact that i'm able to work with people which w whenever i see you do what you do i can say that's how it's supposed to be that that's how the law is supposed to be uh, that's how you're supposed to work with it. That, that's how you're supposed to talk about it. That's how much respect you should have for it. I was very excited to not only be in that position, but also help other people that were in my own position, like finding out where are the different places where I can actually land a profitable job and, 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 and a great opportunity uh, and do that for other people. So I know that there are many write out their potential virtual assistants for you guys that are looking for an opportunity to have their minds completely blown. Like when I started looking at everything that you do, again, I was amazed and I, I felt like it was some sort of a calling. It was calling me, it was calling me home, but from a different country. I know that might sound a little bit weird, but to me, it makes a lot of sense. It's working with the people that I always wanted to work with, doing something that I know it's honest and it's good and it helps other people out. It gives them a lot of equilibrium and balance in their lives. It brings back uh, 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 the income. And because, like you mentioned uh, before, uh, it's because of the currency exchange rate that we get, that we can gain so much from it, that we are able to achieve all of that and more. So. It, it was that, like the fact that I'm able to work with righteous people and do the right thing at the same time. That was calling to me. 
Yeah, I, I love that. And 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 it gives you a broad exposure to a lot of attorneys, great conversations that can be had where you can really learn um, some of the amazing things that some of uh, some of these um, uh, law- lawyers are doing uh, when they uh, in, you know, growing their practice and, and leading a team and uh, being there for their clients. Um, I know, I mean, I've got incredible attorneys in, in our coaching programs, incredible attorneys here listening to this podcast right now. Um, so I, I totally get it. And, and uh, it's just uh, it's just a wonderful group of people to, to be working with. Um, and it's unfortunate that you don't have the same experience, you know, locally uh, where you live. Uh, but we're the ones who gain from that, right? We've got we've got you uh, presenting and 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 preparing a, amazing content for us to uh, experience, go through, and watch. Um, now, one of the things that you mentioned before was about how you were uh, the most um, healthy um, unemployed person. And um, I know that health is is a, a a core value for you or a key a key talking point for you. So I want to dive into that for a little bit. Um, I have been um, uh, ashamed or unashamed to share on the podcast the, my struggles with keeping healthy. Um, and for me, uh, it you know I'm a I'm a family man. Um, I have a, I have a quite a quite a few children. Uh, <laughs> Um, I have six children. Uh, three of them are grown. Uh, they're, you know, not completely out of, uh, you know, out from under my wings yet, but, but on their way there, uh, you know, two of them are in college. One works for me here at, at profit with law. Um, and then I've got three little ones. And, uh, what I find is, is that exercise for me or even eating healthy always takes a back seat to all the other things that I'm doing. Um, and I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if you're single, married, have kids, don't have kids. Sometimes it's hard to get advice from somebody who's, you know, they're single and they're like, oh, it's simple. You just prioritize your health and no big deal. You wake up at four in the morning and you work out for two (laughs) hours and then you prepare your food for the day and, you know, and completely oblivious to the fact that at four in the morning, there's somebody crying and needs to be fed a bottle. And at five 30 in the morning, two other kids are up who need to be entertained. Lunch is made, get dressed, you know, get ready for school. By the time that you get them out the door, all of a sudden it's time for your first, you know, appointment on your calendar. Um, and, you know, and, and then where does the day go? Um, so I'm just curious. Uh, there's a lot of people listening to this who struggle with time management. They struggle with with prioritizing their own um, personal self uh, over all these other things. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on that. And if you have any tips, tricks, things that people can do uh, to try to change the script a little bit on how they show up for themselves. Yes, of course. So let's flip the script on that one. Uh... I got to say, I can relate a lot to that. Um, my situation right now, I, I live with my partner. We do have plans to get married. We are still in discussions as, uh, on if we want to have a family or not. We are not the children type. But again, not all virtual assistants are done the same. I know plenty of them also have kids. Uh, they're doing uh, great by themselves. <laughs> Actually, one of my uh, co-workers, she has a six-year-old and she is way more fit and his son looks a lot more healthy than I will ever look like. But uh, where I come from, I also come from a place where I never used to do anything towards my health. I, 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 and it's not about working out or eating healthy. It's a combination of many things. It's about, to me, it was a sudden realization. Like I, I turned off my computer screen. I saw my reflection in there and I didn't like what I see, I, what I saw, sorry. Uh, I saw myself as exactly who I am and I, I really like myself. But I knew I wanted to feel better and I knew I wanted to feel different. So for me, it was a choice. And back then, I was packed with work. I was packed with school. I was in law school right then. I was also doing it. I was having two different jobs because I also paid my way through law school. So and I know that's a familiar struggle with many people out there. So, yes, it is prioritizing a few things. But to me, it was. Uh, At first, I needed to figure out what was something that I wanted to do in order to feel better. And eventually, I found out that going to the gym wasn't it. Uh, I'm not a gym rat. I I really like it and I enjoy it, but I go there for a purpose. So my biggest advice would be to find something that you really like. For me, it was triathlon. And then I got hooked. So find that thing that you really like and then 
the the group in there will they'll they'll start pulling you. Now, when you have a family, I know that triathlon might not seem like the most uh, family friendly sport. It can be quite selfish, um, but there's so many different activities that you can do with or without your partner, with your family, or just by yourself. Uh, so to me, it was that. Later in life, I figured out that when I started going to the gym, I did it with a purpose. And when I started in, eating healthy, I did it for a specific thing. And when I enrolled myself in a competition, I wanted to be the best version of myself that I could be without injuring myself. So I was never a, an elite athlete, but I did compete with many of them, many Olympic athletes. I know a, a couple of them from Spain and from Mexico. Um, all in the triathlon uh, uh, sport. And I was able to learn a lot from them. So eventually the take that I have to this is I made it my own. This is something that I really like for myself and for my life and for my lifestyle. My biggest suggestions besides any hacks would be find the thing that you like and then hone your craft, which is something that I know you're very much familiar with. Like the work that you do here with Profit With Law. I wish we had something like this in my country when I was running my business. I wish we had something like this right now uh, because you tell people like, it's not how to cut corners. It's how to actually get there with the best possible way and not necessarily the fastest way because sometimes the fastest thing or the easiest thing is not the way to go. <laughs> but uh, achieving those type of results and then sharing that type of knowledge, uh, that's something that I relate to. Uh, not only on the on the sports side of the uh, of this equation, but also on the business side of the equation. I think that what you're doing is pretty much spreading the word on the healthy habits that you need to have or you could have in order to run a successful law law practice. So, also uh, very much kudos to you. And I'm again, I'm very excited to be here. Like, I'm right. if, if you want to cut me up at some moment, you can do so. But I'm very yeah. happy to be working with someone. Yeah, Joe, Joe. I so first of all, I find it very interesting that you're a triathlete. I don't know if you know this, but you spotlighted um, an attorney, um, Becky Torres, on the um, the get staffed up. Uh, what's it called? The client corner or what? The, oh, we call it the candid combos. Like fifteen. Yeah, the can the candid combos. Right. So you had a conversation with her, and I don't remember if it came up in the conversation. But do you know that she is also a triathlete? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So she, she's, I mean, she, she's a very competitive triathlete. Um, and there's another attorney that I know, um, Rachel Brenke, um, who's also uh, a triathlete. Um, and she just, uh, um, got into the, the international there's, there's, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to botch it, but she just, she just got accepted into, um, uh, the, the international competing team or whatever it is, uh, that, that the U S um, sends like just a handful of triathletes to compete in. Um, interesting that you should bring up triathlons because, uh, back in, in 2019, um, or was it 2020? uh 2019 it was right before covid um you know i decided that i wanted to change flip the script on on my health and i decided to go for uh not not a, a full triathlon but a sprint triathlon um mm -hmm. and i trained for eight weeks and i ended up competing in the sprint triathlon uh and it was a lot of fun i enjoyed it um and what i found about myself is that when I have a plan and I have a training program for it, and I'm actually like going towards something like towards a, a date, a deadline, a goal, um, it's way more, uh, it's way easier for me to make sure I do it, prioritize it. Like I was pretty diligent. I, I worked out six days a week um, and I did it two days of running, two days of swimming, two days of biking. And uh, <clears throat> I stuck with that, excuse me, I stuck with that pretty pretty diligently. I think I might've missed a couple, but even when I traveled for business, I went to a conference or whatever, before I even went, I mapped out, where am I going to run? You know, is there a place for me to go swimming? Is that, you know, and if I'm not training for something, I would never do that. I'd be like, okay, they have a, they have a, an exercise room. Maybe I'll make it there. You know, then when you get there, there's like so little equipment in there. You're like, oh, there's nothing here for me to do. I'll just go for a swim. I'll swim some laps. You go in the pool. It's not really long enough to swim laps. So you swim around a little bit. But there you go. You didn't, you know, like there's no exercise. Um, and uh, so it, it's just very interesting that you that you bring that up. 
I'm curious to know for me going for the triathlon for me, it was just like having something that I'm involved in. So I'm pretty convinced that if I like joined a softball team or if I joined a tennis team or, you know, if I did something that required me to like commit to something that I need to show up for, I I have a feeling that would make a big difference for me. What was it for you that, that, that that triathlons were the thing? Like what, what did you like about it that, that got you hooked on triathlons as this is what I'm going to do to keep in shape. Okay. Well, I'm a very intense guy. Uh, and then when you do triathlon and, and you start going at it with some elite level athletes or some Olympic level athletes, you figure out that it's not just three sports. And that's how it used to be called. Like, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to botch this. And there's probably going to be a lot missed, like lost in translation here. But uh, Le Trois Sport or the three sports, that's how it started. And right, and it, it, it gained that competitive edge in the US and then it became the Ironman because of the different competitions they were running in Hawaii and then the championship used to be there. Now I have friends in San George, the, 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 I know that they ran there, some of them uh, uh, finished them even top 10. But the point is that not only is the story amazing, but you have to do a lot of different sports if you want to be good at it. It's not only swimming and biking and running, there's also stretching, strength training. You have to have a ton of flexibility. You have to do, well, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a good idea if you vary it a little bit, which, which is how the triathlon as a competitive sport actually came to be. It, it, they were a track team and they said, okay, let's do a triathlon to switch things up a bit. And that's how it, it, it gained that momentum and that strength. So for me, it was a diversity of sports, three of them being endurance sports, which is something that my body was calling to. I was looking for the distance. I was looking for my, uh, to, to, to start listening to myself and how I breathe. And that's when it took on a different, I, I started taking a different approach to it. First, I, I, I started being very competitive because I started winning at competitions. I even came up top of my ranking, uh, but then I started noticing what people do in order to get ahead and how people like sometimes to cheat, at least in my country. I know that in the U.S. drafting is not allowed over here. It's kind of a big thing and I don't like it. It's kind of dangerous. Uh, I have to be like very much aware of who the person is in front of me and behind me. And that's just too much of a bother for me. I like doing things on my own. So I started noticing a lot of injuries and that's not the way that I want to go at it. I want to be able to be that old guy that when you look at me and he's 80 and he wants to go out and take a run on the beach, that's me. So I start, I stopped competing for a position and then I started doing it for my health. Right now, I don't hate myself or punish myself if I don't train twice a day, seven days a week with two weeks per rest every year, which sucks. Uh, right now it's more of a, my body needs it. I feel it. I stay in shape. My heart is pumping. My, my skin looks great. I feel amazing. And if I get a, like a two or three days of non, not exercising, nothing at all, that's okay. Like where's the rush. If I want to be that 80 year old guy, that's able to run on the beach because my knees are still working, then I need to do this with a different approach. I don't want to be on top all the time. I want to get there at the end. And that's not something that many people can do. I, I've seen so many of my friends injured. And for this and for any sport, including hiking, which also I'm a big fan of hiking and climbing. Um, if you love it so much, take care of yourself so you can, so you'll be able to do it the rest of your life. That's my approach to it. So that's why uh, going back to your first question, like what got me hooked? Um, I would say, or, or, or what can you do to flip the script? Find something that you want for yourself and that will complement your life and everything else will just fall into place. Yeah. And OK, so so I, I do want to like kind of change gears here in yeah. the same vein. Right. So when it comes to whether it comes to making time for the exercise activity or whatever or the com competition that you're involved in or whatever it is, or whether it's making time to prepare to go grocery shopping and have the right food for yourself or prepare the food that you need uh, to fuel your body. Um, it opens up a whole nother conversation around time management, work-life balance, um, you know, in that conversation. And I think that ultimately when 
I know me listening to your responses and I can only translate how I'm hearing them and what's, what, um, what's coming up for me. I can't speak for my listeners, but I'm sure that there are some who are sitting there saying, yeah, it's great that you can, you know, that you, you chose triathlons. You're very competitive. It's, you know, you're passionate about it. We get all that. Right. But you don't, you're not, you're not a business owner. You, you're not, you're not, stuck in the office till nine o'clock at night. You're not finding that you need to go in on the weekend because some client matter came up that can't wait until the next week. Um, and getting these things, these curveballs thrown at you that like just completely obliterates your plans of whatever you were going to do. Um, what do you have to say to how you or somebody can manage that aspect of it. In other words, there, there's, it's great to, you know, I buy into it. Like, this is the thing I want to do, but what's, what about actually the doing, like, what about making the time and, and for it and, and being able to stick to it, you know, to realistically say, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to prioritize this above everything else. And, you know, nothing's going to come before it. That's not reality. Right. But, but reality is somewhere in, in the middle. How does somebody navigate that? How do they, what are the tools that you use to manage your time so that you you have place to to make sure that all these things are happening? Um, and and how can somebody translate what you're doing into per perhaps a solution for what they're doing? You know, that that's a very fair question. I, I really like that one. Uh, right now, maybe some of your listeners might be thinking, so does that does this guy actually work? Because again, triathlon is a very uh, there's three different sports, it's very selfish, but uh, this is something that I really like about where I work. This is something where, that I really like about Get Stuffed Up. I do have a full-time working position. So I am familiar with the, I have to get up, I have to deliver, I have a punch-in time, a punch-out time. Uh, sometimes I have to uh, finish up different projects. Sometimes there's different stresses in life. I know when life throws a curveball at you, how can you handle all of that? So I can relate from there. Um, I would say choose your battles. Uh, this term, I don't know if it's popular in the U.S. I believe I heard it in there, uh, but it's uh, the weekend warrior. And it's, you got to build up momentum and choose your fights. So for me, I know I'm not going to go for a three-hour jog on a Monday or a Tuesday because I got work to do. And first things first, I, I, I do know that, that that this type of sport and any type of sport can, can be very involving and demanding but uh, I do have to prioritize and I really like to prioritize different things in my life if I'm not a productive human being what kind of a guy am I when I go to a competition and I start bragging with my friends or with my teammates when back at the office I kind of suck so right here I have not well at home uh, whenever you guys want to visit including yourself Moshe uh, my, my house is your house mi casa es tu casa I have a pool right here so I have a harness, I have my bike, and I can run. That's all I need. So uh, keep it simple, have everything you need at hand, and then just prioritize and execute. I prioritize my work, I prioritize my deliveries, my relationship, my family, and my health. So I'm able to do all of this, but not for three or four hours a day, which is someone that's very competitive, that's what they're doing. They're training four or five hours a day, every single day, and they're exposing themselves a little bit to injury. If you have an excellent trainer or excellent coach and, 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 and are really experienced at what you do, then go at it. But if that's taking time from the other important things that you have in life, then it can wait. Again, and from my position, I'm going to get there when I'm 80. And I've already won the, the, the invitation to a world championship, and I've, it's... It is everything that it's supposed to be, but at the same time, that's not my full life. My full life is a mixture of so many different things that I really enjoy all of them. I enjoy my work. I enjoy my family. I enjoy my home. I enjoy my sport and I have a, a place for it. So I would start slowly on Monday and start building up towards Saturday and Sunday and then just become the weekend warrior or plan a kick-ass competition. So you have half Ironmans or full Ironmans in the U.S. You don't even need to win a championship for that. If you enroll yourself for one, uh, please, uh, a ton of training before you don't want to get hurt. 
like a full Ironman, it, it requires at least like at eight months of training. Uh, otherwise, you're probably going to hate it. And my point is, I, I want to enjoy it. I enjoy the training. So I find the place and the moment for everything, even when I'm traveling, like, okay, so is there a nearby track where I can run a couple of laps or I can run my miles? Or if not, then I'm going to do it uh, on the treadmill. Or if not, I'm going to do some strength training. Or if not, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to stretch. I, I can't. If you want to be an old guy or an old lady and be able to reach out for things for yourself, I can't stress enough how important stretching is. And right now with a herniated disc, I can tell you, I wish I'd known that before that. So it's not like every day I'm going to go 100% on that. I'm just going to pick my battles, look for an open time frame, and just make the best of it. Maybe it's a family event, or maybe it's something for myself. That would be my recommendation. Yeah, um, I, I love this idea of, and I don't know if this is exactly what you said. Maybe I'm twisting it a little bit, but I love this idea of less is more and and even a little bit is worth something you know and, and th so and i struggle with this personally like if i'm not going to have an hour to ride a bike i'm not getting on the bike but the reality is is that 20 minutes is better than nothing yeah. so i should be hopping on the bike for 20 minutes and and i have resistance around that and i need to overcome that and i think that probably other people do as well um, so even if it's like, okay, I've got 15 minutes right now between calls, I'm just going to open the door. I'm going to walk outside. I'm going to take a, a, a fast, brisk walk for 15 minutes. I, I can't get sweaty. I can't, you know, I, I don't have time to put on sneakers. I don't have time for a shower. That's okay. Like just do something to get the body moving to, to, you know, and, and then you build on that. Um, and I like the idea of the weekend warrior also, although for those of us that are family, you know, oriented people, our kids own the weekends too. You know, it's not like, it's not like the weekends any different than the weekdays. As a matter of fact, it's even harder because they're not in school. They're not like normally they're at least they're occupied during the day. Like for me, it might be easier to figure out how to block two hours on my calendar after the kids are off to school and before my first appointment at nine for like from nine to 11 as my exercise time during the week than to try to fit two hours on the weekend. Um, but I, I, what you what you shared, the concept, I understand. And that is that, like, start with something, do a little bit and then build on it when you have time. So if it's the weekend for you, then build on it on the weekend and make it something a little bit more. Um, and ultimately, you could turn it into into something greater um, and 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 find something to sign up for where you're planning for an eventual goal so that you know that I, you know, like you said, eight months of preparation for for an Ironman. I mean, I would I would say start with a sprint triathlon where it's eight weeks of preparation, right? And prep for eight weeks, knock that out, and then you know go for another, and then go for a half, and then go, you know, uh, and it doesn't have to be like triathlons are an example. Uh, yes. You know, you can you can really do anything. Like sign up for you know join a, a, a men's or women's you know basketball team and just you know get together once a week and play basketball. You're going to want to do better when you're playing. So you're going to during the week you're going to want to find opportunities to get some exercise so that you're not the you know the old fart or, or the out of shape uh, you know middle aged person who's you know, panting on the side of the court while everybody else is running up and down. Um, so I really think that if you just involve yourself in an activity that gives you the motivation because you have to show up to it, like you're committed, um, now that gives you the motivation to find things in between. Um, yeah, that definitely, definitely sounds like, like that could work. You know, our time flew by and if I would have thought for a second that we would spend most of the time talking about exercise and triathlons, um, it, you know, it, I I, I would never have guessed that. So it was a great conversation. I appreciate you coming on, Joe, and, and having that conversation with us. In the intro, I kind of talked about, um, uh, you know, that I was going to explore a topic with you that we didn't do. So I want to just spend a minute on it. Um, yeah. I introduced this idea of an entrepreneur, basically somebody who works in a company, but feels like they are empowered to make decisions. They feel like they're um, they're part of the team and they kind of approach 
the, the, the business as if it's theirs, as if, as if they're the owner and they have to like, they, they want to make sure that it's successful. Um, and I get the feeling that that's how you operate within the Get Staffed Up organization. I'm curious from your perspective as an employee in an organization, what can a leader do to encourage their team to act in that way, to not be just, okay, I punch a clock in, I punch a clock out, I do I do my ch- task list for the day and I'm done and that's their job. What can they do to have their team operate from a different level where they're taking ownership and they're, and they're, they're excited about the overall growth of the company and everybody's kind of pulling together to reach the, you know, the, the, the success that the business is seeking? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that's, uh, th- thank you for, 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 uh, putting that entrepreneurial spirit right in front of the, in front of me, because I, I do believe I have it. I do believe that I've been encouraged to take it. And that's one of the big things in here. Uh, Get Stepped Up is an amazing company. They've been providing me since I started. And it is something that anybody who works with a virtual assistant or a VA, it's something that, that I highly suggest you do is bring them in. Uh, it's not something that I was able to, to bring out by myself. It was something that I was also encouraged to do. I started at an entry level position. I started as a virtual assistant. I started checking out different things within uh, uh, sales and within administrative stuff. And then slowly but surely, I started gaining momentum. And people would know, notice that and they would acknowledge that. So it was because they did that that I kept gaining momentum and felt happier and stronger working. Uh, exactly where I was and doing what I did, that I was able to scale up, move on to different positions. And then I was offered this role. They told me, uh, I want you to be our senior brand ambassador. I want you to lead the, these type of efforts in this specific type of channels. And I was all for it. I immediately told uh, uh, one of our co-founders, which by the way, I believe both of them also enjoy triathlon. I know Brett does, and I, I, I have a uh, a, a pretty good understanding that Enrique as well. So I know triathlon is big with lawyers. I don't know why right now, but that wasn't the thing that was helping me relate to them. It was the fact that we were all in. The, the thing that I really liked about, and I know this to be true about both our co-founders, which is the business owner point of view, the, the one that I want to share. It's not like they hired a bunch of virtual assistants and then left the business running with them. They're in it 100%. They are always responsive. They are always there for you. And they encourage you to take something for yourself and they want you to do good. So if you're able to put that energy into your company, I'm pretty sure you're going to get the best out of your people. So someone can be or or someone can live a, a similar situation than mine where I felt very much comfortable with taking this mantle and taking this role and say, yeah, of course I can do this. I really like it. I see no problem with it. And it's not like it's an exclusive treatment. It's not like they're curating me. It's something that they're doing with everybody in the company. They want it to be great. So to sum things up, I know it's been more than a minute, but but it is a very interesting question. I'd say empower your people to do it and have an amazing company and they'll want to do it as well. And with lawyers, which to me is one of the most honorable positions out there, uh, I I know that this can happen. It's it's an honor to work with you guys. Yeah, thank you for that, Joe. It sounds to me, and I'm gonna summarize your response, sounds to me like um, there's two main key ingredients that have basically allowed you to step into that role within your organization. One, is the leaders trusted you, elevated you, empowered you in the process. They basically let you know, hey, we think that you've got the goods and we're going to extend the rope. We're going to we're going to say, OK, let now do more. Take on this title, take on this title and continue to elevate you in the process. And the second thing is is that the leaders were extremely responsive and continue to be extremely responsive. So basically they're, they're hands-on, they're, they're actively involved with their staff and being, making sure that you continue to let them know that you're there to back them up 
is another key ingredient. So thank you for sharing those those two perspectives with us. Um, and this was a, a great conversation. Maybe we'll have to have you on again at some other point to, to, to explore some more, because I know that there's other areas of expertise that you bring, um, but this is a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. We're out of time. Uh, what I like to do when we, when we end off the, the conversation uh, is I like to leave our our audience with number one, uh, number one what is like your if you had if you were going to give one lasting piece of advice to our listeners try to you know generalize to the general audience um what is one piece of, of advice that you would that you would leave them with uh at the end of this episode and the second thing is if they want to get in touch with you for whatever reason uh you know how would they do that and i'm going to tell you that we have a link um on our website that goes straight to get staffed ups uh page so uh we are um, affiliates of Get Staffed Up. We send our own uh, coaching clients there all the time. Um, and if any of our listeners want to go, um, we offer a $750 discount um, off of, or we, in collaboration with you, we have a $750 discount off of the fee to get started with onboarding a virtual assistant through Get Staffed Up. And you can access that at profitwithlaw.com forward slash Get Staffed Up. That will be linked up in the show notes. If you're out for a run, if you're in the shower, don't worry. Um, just go to the show notes page or, or go down to the description of this podcast and you'll, you'll find the links there. Um, so again, it's profitwithlaw.com forward slash Get Staffed Up. Um, so Joe, What's your, your number one piece of advice that you want to leave our listeners with? Well, my number one piece of advice is something that was taught to me inside this company as well, which is delegate your weight to freedom. What that means is always continue to scale your operation up. And if all of those things that you no longer need to do yourself, then have capable hands where you can delegate that to. If not, then you're going to be doing everything by yourself and you're going to stay at the same place for a very long time. So that would be my biggest advice uh, to get in touch with us or to get in touch with me specifically and with us. Uh, well, Moshe, you've already said it. Also, if you come to us at getstaffedup.com uh, slash VIP, uh, that's also a way of letting us know. But just please let us know that you came from Profit With Law, that you that you know Moshe, uh, you already know that we have something special special in there for you. Uh, but if you want to look at us or find us in social media, you can look at us. Uh, we're pretty much everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So you can look at me as Joe Bravo. And you can also find our co-founders, Brett Tremblay and Enrique Fernandez in there. So feel free to look us up and we'll be happy to hook you up. Awesome, Joe. Um, I love I, I love that piece of advice that you gave, um, because really, ultimately, when you look at um, owning a business, uh, what really allows a, a business owner to live the life of their dreams is the delegation. Right. It's it's the game of figuring out how to get everyone else to do the work and still be profitable. And that's really the key. And that's why I love Get Staffed Up so much because so many people have resistance around hiring somebody because of how much of a commitment it is to do that. And if you start with a simple virtual assistant and you get really good at delegating tasks that can be delegated to somebody who doesn't have the knowledge of paralegal has, they don't have the knowledge an attorney has, they're not a file clerk, they're not, they're not any of those things. If you can figure out how to how to identify tasks that are happening in your organization and pass them down to a virtual assistant, what that does is, is it makes you that much more powerful when you do bring on that paralegal, when you do bring on that attorney, when you do bring on that, um, you know, that file clerk, because now they're going to be focused doing exactly what they need to be doing. And they're not going to be wasting their time with these other things. So it's really like the number one hire that you should do in your in your law firm if you're starting with just you and you need to bring somebody on. And if you already have a team, you should start considering having a VA for every one of your attorneys. Imagine how uh, th they could be basically an executive assistant for your attorney. You can also share like one VA on, amongst multiple attorneys, but imagine if the attorney never needed to do any anything personal on their time. Like they could just handle like, oh, we, ha I, we have to pay this medical bill. I'm going to hand it to my VA. They're going to take care of it. They have my credit card. They know exactly what needs to be done. They know where to file it. I, I've got this, this thing that came up. I, you know, I got to get in touch with this client for this reason. Hand it to my assistant. Hand it to my assistant. Imagine how much more powerful your attorneys can be, how much more revenue they can bring in if they were able to free up just, I don't know, 10 hours a week of their time, five hours a week of their time. 
what's the value of that? And then you look at the cost of a, of a virtual assistant at eight, you know, 1850 bucks a month. Um, it's paid for in like the first week when you, when you put it down, when you look at it that way. So you should all, you should start thinking about having every single one of your billers, every single one of your timekeepers, every single one of your people that are actually bringing in money into the firm, pairing them up with somebody who can handle all those things that come up. Cause you know that they're there. They're there for you as the business owner too. Um, get really good and not only getting that off your plate, but also getting that off of your team members plate. So I really love uh, that you honed in on that show. A uh, really good piece of advice and, um, and, and, and get stuffed up. It's just a wonderful company to, they vet the people for you. Like they send you, um, they don't train them. They're not, you know, some people think, Oh, they're coming already legal trained or whatever. No, they're not trained on working with law firms. Some of them might've had law firm experience, but they are vetted. Right. And they're coming to you with an interview already done, video recorded. So, like when you get a candidate, they send you like a video interview. They send you a video that they recorded all about themselves. What's so good about them? They send you a resume. So, you get all of that up front and you could say, yeah, you're nay. You know, I want to move forward. But then you still go through your regular hiring process. You can interview them 10 times if you want until you make your decision um, and, you know, and choose somebody. Um, and then you get a full time employee for no, you know, no payroll taxes. No, you know, you don't have to worry about, I nines and withholdings and all that stuff. You know, they're they're at, you're outside. You're contracting with Get Staffed Up, and they're bringing in outside contractors who are non U.S. Uh, based, and uh, it's just a wonderful model to get started or to get or to or to really amplify the team that you already have. So I really love it. Um, and folks, as I wrap up, I want to just go back to something that I shared at the beginning of the episode. If you're interested in getting on uh, a free coaching call with one of our coaches and um, let, allowing us to help you navigate and understand where where you where you falling short? Where are you getting in your own way? What do you what can you do to start to uh, fix that and get out of your own way? And I mean, we had this entire episode talking, or almost this entire episode talking about health and getting out of your own way when it comes to your health. The reality is, is that it's all it's all in the mind, right? We have the ability and the power to do anything, and what our coaches can do in this free session is they can help you navigate and figure out like. What is it that's keeping you from getting to where you want to go and help you identify that you will leave with so much clarity about what you need to do next. As a matter of fact, they do such a good job that you're probably going to, you might even think like, oh, I could do this on my own. I got the so solution now. I can do this on my own. I don't need the coaching program, but our coaching program is there to help you. If you want to join us, that would be awesome. If not, the free coaching session is there for the taking. You can, you can get it. You can get the clarity and you can just go on with life. But um, you can only get it if you sign up for it. So go to uh, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. Again, all these things will be linked up in the show notes. Uh, Joe is going to send me the the social media profiles for all the people he said, both him, uh, him and Brett and, and, and Enrique. Um, and we'll add all of that to the show notes notes. So you don't have to figure anything out. You simply go to profitwithlaw.com, check out the most recent episode. You'll find it all there. Folks, it's been awesome. Really an, a, a great interview, Joe. Thank you very much for being with us. Until next time, uh, just focus on the profits. Make sure you're taking money home uh, for yourself, for your family. Uh, don't spend it all on needless expenses. And really, when you focus on the right things, um, you'll be able to flip the script in your business. You'll be able to increase your revenue. You'll be able to decrease your expenses. You'll take more money home. Um, and as Joe said, you know, it all delegate your way to success. I love that. Um, you can do it. You can do it. The name of the game is, is, is really just getting yourself out of the game and, you know, you got to figure out how you can get there. Um, and it's not overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And, um, Listening to this podcast is one of the tools that you have in your tool belt, but what other tools are you going to put in there? How else are you going to make it happen? Um, so we're here for you on the podcast. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you're getting notified every time we release a new episode, which is twice a week. Um, and then we're here for you at the Profit With Law team. Um, so go get a free coaching session, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. And we're here for you to help you with 
getting getting that first hire or or amplifying your team by bringing on some offshore VAs who can really move the needle for you um, very inexpensively. Like you can get three VAs for the price of one full-time employee here in the US. And it's just amazing that you can get 120 hours of labor for the price of 40. Um, and if you are smart, and you're diligent and you do a good job of really systemizing your process and being able to delegate the stuff to people who are virtual or offshore, not in your office, um, you've basically won. Um, so that's what I want for everybody. I want you guys to win. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Take care. That's it for this week's episode of Profit With Law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.